Hi, Morgan Doremus from RT Book Reviews here, and I am sitting with Christina Wright, who is an erotica author and editor, because you work in antholo anthologies, so you gather up great short stories, put them all together in a collection. Um, you're doing a lot with Cleus Press right now, right. and we were together yesterday. We were at Book Expo America, mm -hmm. BEA. We were on the floor, and of course, the big buzz this year, it's all about erotica. Right. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey has grown tremendously. It's still, you know, the number one, two, and three on the New York Times right. bestseller list. Um, and so there's so many people out there saying, what is erotica? What's next in erotica? Where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. uh, so so from as an expert, what, what do you think about the explosion of erotica? I'm very thrilled by it. I have not, I will admit, I have not read the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, mm -hmm. so I can't speak about the books themselves, but I'm very excited to see that erotica and erotic romance are becoming more in part of the mainstream media is picking mm -hmm. up on it and people are paying attention now to what a lot of us have been doing for several years now and writing these stories um, that kind of combine the erotic and the romantic. And what I'm seeing a lot of is before, you know, before the big this year, the the erotica or the erotic romance, mm -hmm. people would like have the covers and they try to kind of hide them or they'd have them on their <laughs> Kindles right. or their iPads. And now it's not, there's, I, I, I don't want to say there was a stigma, but in a way there was of mm -hmm. like, oh, don't show people what you're reading. And now mm -hmm. it's like, it seems like there's much more open arms about, you know, what's going on. And I know your Cleus Press, those books, they have wonderful Beautiful covers, covers yes. and a lot of time, very sexy mm -hmm. covers, but it really goes to, um, you really know what you're going to get, though, because these these sh stories mm -hmm. that, that you include in the anthologies, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, and but I, I really think it depends on where you are uh, as whether it's still it's accepted. But I, I am <laughs> seeing a lot more Kindles and Nooks and Sony e-readers, <laughs> and people are reading them. And I'm over here in conversations about Fifty Shades of Grey and what other books might be out there. So I, I think it's wonderful if people feel comfortable reading um, one of my best erotic romance or, or fairy tale <laughs> lust or lustfully ever after, after in public, that's great. But if not, the ebooks are available. And it's, it's one of those ways that people can embrace um, the particular genre that they love to read without feeling uncomfortable. But uh, I do think there's now kind of an awareness that the books are out there and that other people are reading them and that you can get them pretty much anywhere. And so it's exciting to see that the bookstores and even Amazon and um, the other online retailers are kind of pushing our, our books as well and kind of uh, recommending them. If, if you like Fifty Shades of Grey, you'll like this. So it's wonderful to see that people who've been reading them for years can finally admit that they're reading them and enjoying <laughs> them and hopefully, you know, pass them on and recommend them to their friends. Well, I know when you write, um, and you oftentimes put, you have short stories in these anthologies and in other anthologies, you definitely write in the short format, mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to see you. Why do you find yourself um, more geared towards that, that your voice works in that sort of format? Well, I, I write long as well. Uh, I, I think I just have done really well with the short <laughs> fiction ah. to this point. So your I, fans I, approve of the, sh <laughs> of the short s stories. Sure. Um, I started out with Silhouette, so mm -hmm. I was actually writing uh, Romantic Suspense years ago mm -hmm. and kind of gravitated toward uh, erotic fiction. So, And at the time, it was short format was the way to go with erotica, and now we're seeing the longer formats are becoming more popular, which is nice to see. And um, for me, writing short means I get to tell this entire story in a very small you know, little space of time. And I, I tend not to write uh, over a long span of time. It's usually a day or two or maybe a week or so in a short story. So it's nice to have that whole little package of, of an entire relationship or entire story contained in a, in a short format. And it, it's a way to explore a variety of different scenarios and characters um, without too much of a commitment. So I may write as many stories in a year as I would the length of a novel, but I get to tell a whole lot more stories. And you have a whole lot more heroines and heroes. Sure, and sure. Excellent. Do you find yourself um, uh, finding within the subgenre um, going towards more more one type of story or another? I know that you have two anthologies that are, um, the stories are loosely based on fairy tales. So mm -hmm. in my head, I was kind of like this, there's definitely this uh, kind of wish fulfillment maybe in, in your writing. Is that is that something that you're finding or, or where, where would you say you're at? Well, um, hmm. interesting question. I I'm, have this eclectic kind of sense. I, I'm a bad writer, I guess, in terms of marketing because I have a very eclectic sense of what I want to write. And it sometimes something will grab me and I'll see. I'm a fan of pop culture, so I kind of pay attention to what's going on around mm -hmm. me. And you see certain themes 
reoccurring and you see a lot of uh, you know, fairy tale television, fairy tale film, mm -hmm. and it was kind of intriguing to me. And I, I've taught community college um, a class in mythology, and I, I bring fairy tales into that class and teaching my students that even with mythology, you see it everywhere, mm -hmm. even in contemporary society, because they tend to think that mythology is Greeks and gods and you know, Greek gods and um, you know, it's very historical, but it, you can see it, you know, everywhere. And the same thing with the fairy tales. I think they translate well to a contemporary setting and um, and, and to contemporary readers because there there's a sense of uh, a universal sense to them. So for the fairy tale collections, it's been fun to see how authors reinterpret the stories and, and finding my own um, favorite fairy tales retold. Um, but I do have a, a collection coming out in November that's a military collection called Duty and Desire. And I'm a mil military wife, my husband's in the Navy, so it, it seemed to me it was it was an anthology that was just kind of begging to be um, put together simply because um, the military has always had so, sort of an aura about it. And um, not just the men in the military, women in the military as well, and the stories kind of encompass both. There's certainly stories with both members being in the military. But there's, there's a sense of, excitement about what the military involves on all the branches and I wanted to explore that from the reader's uh, perspective and see why why they like it. We, we know that uniforms are very attractive so we see mm -hmm. the police officers and the firemen but I wanted to see what what the writers could do for with me uh, do for me with the um, the military theme and it, it was really exciting to see there are stories that are historical settings there are stories that are uh, contemporary settings there are stories that are based on every branch of the U.S. military, then we have some European military. So it, it's very exciting to see the variety of stories that came out of that idea. But it, it was just something that felt like it needed to be done. And with my history of being a military family, I thought I was the one to do it. Well, I was going to say with the military, it just it lends itself so much. These these um, these people, they such sacrifice, mm -hmm. such honor, such duty. And so, I mean, talk about hero and heroines like they right. they, you know, epitomize what we're looking for in in characters that we want to read about because right. we really do hold them to high, high esteem. So it's it's it really works out great in my mind. And I know RT readers, they're always looking for great military stories. It's something that um, I get feedback from from our right. readers that like, okay. oh, where can we get this? So this is like a perfect collection for somebody that's looking for some of the spicier reads when it comes to military heroes. Well, and that's the thing. You see a lot of film. Um, there have been films lately dealing with military and the SEALs. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, it's been in the news um, what the military has done in the Middle East. So it's kind of, it's fun to kind of give them more of a personal life and a personal, and, and see what goes on behind the uniform, behind the branch of the military while maintaining that respect for them. And I, I'm I, I hope that we've put together a collection that even military uh, members will be able to read and enjoy and not feel that we misrepresented them in any way because I, I having seen it from a personal perspective, they do have very full and very active lives behind the scenes, but they serve their country and when the uniform comes off, they have a personal life too. And mm -hmm. so we get to explore that from the relationship standpoint in this collection. Well, I know that you have. That's one collection you have coming out later right. this year. There's another one, and the other collection is short stories also, but sure. it is just from your right. POV. Right. It's it's just you <laughs> writing the short stories. Can you tell sure. me about this project? Sure. Uh, I signed to do a collection for HarperCollins and their new Mischief line. Mm -hmm. uh, it's digital only, and it's called Seduce Me Tonight, and it's a collection of 20 short stories that are sort of loosely connected. It's It's... The basic idea is it's a bunch of people that live in the same area, and so there's some overlapping characters, and hopefully readers will be able to pick out, you know, it's it's people that work together, and it, it's people that are neighbors, and that sort of thing. But uh, I wouldn't quite call it a mosaic novel, but it, the stories are loosely linked, and it's it's 20, 20 stories of various relationships in all stages of development, or relationships just starting out, couples that are, are going through separation or some sort of trauma, um, people that have you know, just met and, and are exploring whether there's an attraction there, long married couples. So there's really something for everyone in this collection. I, I kind of envision it as a small um, community of people. And, and the setting was sort of like um, Northern Virginia and DC area. So mm -hmm. not small town necessarily. Although it does, there are stories that are set um, kind of in a more rural area, the stories that are set in a more urban area. So it was a really fun collection to do and it was nice um, to see it from beginning to end and, and see my own voice being carried throughout all of the stories. 
Um, it's different from editing an anthology where I'm trying to mesh the stories mm -hmm. and the voices of the authors together in a, in a way that that kind of flows nicely. And it's doable, but it's it's a different kind of process when you're doing your own work. So this is a different kind of um, book from where it's very exciting um, because the, the Mischief Line did just launch uh, earlier this year. So it's been very exciting to see uh, the books that are coming out of it. And it, it's a different kind of um, project for me because I've never done digital only, but I, I've seen the numbers on ebooks being really high and people are enjoying being able to download things on their on their e-readers mm -hmm. wherever they are and I know I, I'm traveling right now so I'm downloading <laughs> things at the airport to read on the plane so it's exciting and so I'm I'm really excited about that one as well. Yeah, no, digital, it just, it, it seems to make a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Space-wise, sure. uh, money-wise, oftentimes it's, it's a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's it's instantaneous. You can type it Instant in and all of a sudden you have it and you're like, <laughs> yes, oh, and you, you just flip to, through. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the bookstore. You don't have, right. Well, we are very excited to hear about what you have coming out next because, like I said, erotica is so hot right now. Our readers are always looking for something new. Mm -hmm. And so we've got some great collections, and you already have some out that you can go. Christina Wright, uh, hop online, check out some of her short stories. I promise you will not be disappointed.